Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and if you want a bullish sign, the most bullish sign that I can see right now is that there is so much good information out there right now that I could literally make five videos and keep going every day. I mean, it is it is that kind of crazy out there, and I'm and I'm I tried to put together as much as this as I can. Now at the end of this video. I'm going to show you the parallel, really one of the parallels that has been the theme of my channel since I started relating blockchain to the the way the internet came about. And I'm going to show you a video that you've probably never seen and it'll, it'll blow your mind. Now, and I hope I can show it without the copyright hit or whatever, but strap in because this, at the towards the end of this video, it's going to, it's a really interesting parallel. And I'm telling you, you write it down. You can go back and look at my videos over the last two years. This is what this is the way it was always going to happen. And they and the Wall Street and the powers that be, they learned some lessons from the dot com boom and bust and all of that. And there were good lessons in terms of um, you know taking companies public and all that. But I'm going to show you something that that'll blow your mind. Okay, um, XRP Bart sent me two or three good things. Uh, the first thing Michael Saylor says in five years, a billion people will own Bitcoin. And I think, let's see, it says the estimated, estimated number of global crypto users has passed 100 million. One thing's for sure, whether you believe in Bitcoin or not, this is all a numbers game. There's a, the, the scarcity factor is a big deal to a lot of us. And I do own some Bitcoin because I think that... Um, I think that the, the, how if it's allowed to continue, that that scarcity is a monster thing, and I think it probably will be allowed to continue. Now, Zero Hedge put this out: SEC investigating Elon Musk over dog coin quick tweets. This is what, as smart as Elon Musk is, this is what I never understood. I mean, the guy he's gotten in trouble before. I didn't understand why he was do. I mean. I know, look, I guess when you have a, the kind of money he's got, maybe you don't really care what anybody thinks, whether it's the SEC or anybody else, and you can do what you want. But apparently they're investigating him now over the, the how he's been pumping up dog coin. Um, Anthony Scaramucci put this out. Important development in Bitcoin. Stone Ridge filed with the SEC to become first open-ended mutual fund to buy Bitcoin. Now, this makes a good point, folks. We've talked about... You know, over the last two years, we've, we've heard all the, the talk about um, how so-and-so's fi filing for a Bitcoin ETF and this and that, and it kept getting rejected. And, of course, for whatever reason, Jay Clayton never would do it or whatever. So, sorry, I'm drinking some coffee here. Um, and, and, by the way, I've got a an eight-year-old who is literally sitting in my den waiting for me to take him to McDonald's. The, he, he expects it every Friday. I'm going to try to talk him into Chick-fil-A. I'm more in the mood for Chick-fil-A. Okay. Um, so, but this right here makes a good point. You are about to see the SEC and all these um, start to approve. Um, I guess the S I'm assuming the SEC approves mutual funds and ETFs and all that. You're about to start seeing this in mass. Okay. And I've always predicted when you you're gonna you've seen all we've seen all kinds of we've we've seen all kinds of companies you know file to try to do it. But I've always said, watch when this thing's said and done, you the the first one that gets approved, you mark my words, it will be one of the more powerful people on Wall Street, like a Goldman Sachs or a J.P. Morgan that gets the first approval, and it'll be out of nowhere. You may not even see them apply. The SEC may fill out their application, their application for them. <laughs> so um, that's how I think I've always thought this would come come down the pipe. Um, Sergeant Obi Obi Wan, one of our old time friends, sent sent me this. Um, this was going around yesterday, and I missed it before my 
second uh, video that I put out. Um, Greg Kidd, who, if you don't know, he was one of the first 10 people at Ripple. Okay, now he's he's a well, he's always he's been a, a venture capitalist. He's a, he's uh, the backer of all kinds of different technology companies. He was one of the first investors in Twitter. Smart guy, very smart guy. He also started Global ID, and he has he is putting out an XRP debit card, a debit card with up to five percent cash back in XRP. And they actually have a website. You can click here, and you can go to their website and you can join the wait list. I joined the wait list. Okay, um, this guy, I, I, I retweeted this last night and I said, this guy knows. Goal, reset the global financial system. Strategy, operate in plain sight. Objective, the fewer people who invest in the new tech, the better. Tactic, obfuscation and misdirection tactic introduce an economic sideshow with inferior technology and promote it heavily i believe proof of work is that economic sideshow i believe bitcoin is the main event and i believe that they never were that bitcoin never was the one and i believe that they've intentionally focused everybody's direction in everybody's focus in the direction of Bitcoin and I believe it's the it will be the greatest financial sleight of hand in history is what I believe and let me write that down because that's a title right there greatest financial slight sleight of hand in history how about that how about well let's call, let's make it something simpler the greatest financial magic trick, magic trick in history. And that is to focus everybody on the inferior technology and make everybody think it's this thing. Meanwhile, the real money is to be made on the tech that's going to change the world. And it is not and never was Bitcoin. Look down here. This is interesting. This person replied to this guy's tweet. All warfare is based on deception. Hence, we are able to attack. We must seem unable. When using our forces, we must appear inactive. When we near, we must make the enemy believe we are far away. When far away, we must make him believe we are near. Sun Tzu, the art of war. You're darn right. Nothing is, is as it appears. And that's what I've tried to do on this channel is to use the evidence and a little common sense and let you know that just because what you're reading in the news says something does not make it so and it just doesn't none of bitcoin has never made any sense and it and it still doesn't make sense and and the thing the, the reason that you the the all the evidence you need is is the facts that i've told you about what doesn't work about bitcoin the fact that you never hear these Bitcoin maxis taught address those things when they're doing these CNBC interviews is all you need to know. Watch them go on there. You'll never hear them talk about what's wrong with it. And here's another big problem. Here's an, another elephant in the room. Is they, they know Bitcoin is not the one. This is from M. Oracle. Um, this is from the World Economic Forum. This is a graphic about quantum computing. And regardless of where you think quantum computing is, the question you need to ask yourself is, would the world build a financial system around something that could be that they know could be cracked by a quantum computer in the near future or in the next five or 10 years? The answer is a big, loud no, they would not. And who are the companies who are thinking about these things? I've shown you events that Joel, that uh, David Schwartz has gone to at, um, I remember there was one, I think it was at Stanford, where he, that he went to a conference and they were specifically talking about quantum computing. It's not a coincidence that the Flare Network has a chief scientist that's a PhD in quantum computing because there are companies that are out there thinking about these things. And it ain't Bitcoin, folks. Period. It's not. And then if you look at this, quantum computing, this is also from the World Economic Forum. And while, and this shows you they know they're not gonna they're not risking this financial the the financial system uh, 
you know, wondering if tomorrow China or whoever comes out with a quantum computer and screws up the whole financial system is not happening. And while blockchain and cryptocurrency have been hailed as revolutionary means to securely store data and financial information, they were built on existing public key encryption, which may not be a match for quantum computers. In general, many of the security algorithms used to keep our information safe could be cracked relatively quickly by a quantum computer, which is able to factor large numbers more efficiently than the sort of classical computer used to build current encryption standards. Now. I want to make one last point on quantum computers. I was called crazy and I was just speculating and all of that when I was saying that they're going to put nodes on satellites. And then just yesterday, we found out that JP Morgan had been experimenting with blockchain on satellites. So, who's laughing now? Look, the bottom line is this. If you're being told in the news that quantum computing is 20 years out, then you may as well shave off 10 to 15 off of that because they're not going to tell you when they've got one. Okay, that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying necessarily that it's here. If I was putting my money on it, I'd say it is. And they're not telling you yet. But I think that it's a lot closer than people think, and I've seen documentation to that effect. Okay, Brad Garlinghouse, I need more coffee. Hold on. Brad Garlinghouse, Biden administration's priorities are clear. They talk about climate change every day. Instead of arguing about how exactly how much energy mining uses, let's focus on making this industry the leader in sustainability. Props to Energy WebEx and others who are building solutions. So they're continuing this theme, this theme of climate change and who's solving for it? Ripple's solving for it. Is Bitcoin solving for it? No. Bitcoin is the problem. All right. Um, now experts have spoken. JP Morgan says investors could make Bitcoin 1% of portfolios. DJ Peter Voss sent this. This is an article. This is one thing I have said for over two years now, and that's that in, when this game's over, all, not some of the financial institutions, but all of them, all of the financial advisors, retail and institutional, will be telling you. They will be sitting down with you because I used to do it when I was a financial advisor. Um, and I'm not now, but I was. Uh, but they, they will all be sitting down with their clients and saying, well, we think that you should have 1% to 5% in your 5%, 1 to 5% digital assets in your portfolio. And then also on top of that, digital assets are going to swallow the rest of their portfolio because the rest of their portfolio is going to be tokenized with digital assets. Are you hearing me, folks? This is happening. It's all happening now. Okay. Um, Judy Shelton, I, I can't go to the article because you have to pay Bloomberg, but it kind of speaks for itself. Monetary integrity means a trustworthy unit of unit of account and store of value, a dependable dollar. Boy, if she's not speaking code, I don't know who is. Um, now, I wanted to remind you of something. The other day, because, because there are no coincidences, folks, there are no coincidences. Brad Garlinghouse, remember the other day when we were talking about um, how Brad, it had come, Caitlin, Caitlin Long had put this out that, that Ripple had registered Ripple Markets Wyoming LLC back on, a, on the 2nd of November 2020. Okay, and she said, welcome Ripple. Well, Brad Garlinghouse, I showed you, he had tweeted this. Thanks, Caitlin Long. Wyoming is a leader in establishing a comprehensive regulatory framework for crypto, regardless of what asset you're working with. Proud to have a Ripple entity in Wyoming and other jurisdictions prioritizing regulatory clarity. And I had shown you the other day where he copied these two Congress people. This one is Senator Cynthia Loomis, and that's Tyler Lindholm. Well, typically when, when I see something mentioned like this by Brad Garlinghouse, I, usually, I stick it in the memory bank because there's, it's always connected to something down the line, and it is in this case. So, yesterday... This, he tweeted this on the 22nd of February. On the 25th of February, I get this from James Rule. He's showing the parallel live event, the great crypto transition. And this is from the Digital Chamber of Commerce channel right here. Well, who is that? Well, that's the same congresswoman right here, Senator Cynthia Loomis. It's the same one that Brad Garlinghouse mentioned in his tweet. There are no coincidences because all these people are connected, and I'm going to show you in a second. 
invested in this is her. diversified asset allocation. So when I was state treasurer, I was always looking for a good store of value. We wanted some investments that would produce short-term income because all of the income, dividends, and realized capital gains off our permanent funds were used uh, in our general fund. Uh, but we also wanted long-term stores of value because we were taking minerals out of the ground, which is a long-term store of value, converting them to cash, and we wanted to have some aspect. Anyway, I just wanted you to see her speak. And then I wanted to make you aware of this. This is the Chamber of Digital Commerce. This is where I believe, and, and this is out of Washington, D.C., and I've shown you um, the girl, Perry Ann Boring. She started as a White House. I mean, she. I think she went to, some, I think it was Florida State University or something like that. But she started as, a, as an intern at the White House. And I wanted to make the point, I believe... That her, this organization, I believe she was picked to head up this organization, the Chamber of Digital Commerce. And if you watch, if you go through their channel, everybody that is changing the world with this in this blockchain industry is a member of this Chamber of Commerce. And they parade everybody who's connected to Ripple, everybody who's connected to all of the, the entire power base of the United States comes through the Chamber of Digital Commerce and it's what I would compare Perry Ann Boring to is when you're watching basketball, you know what an alley oop is where somebody, one guy throws the basketball up and the other guy comes in and dunks it. Well, Perry, Perry Ann Boring, that's what I would compare her to. She's the person that throws the ball up and lets these politicians and powerful people come in and slam dunk it for consumption by the public. That's what this organization is. And I wanted to show you. If you want to, if you want to see who's making things happen, and and or or if you want to see who you need to, and and I look at things like this because the, when with my money, I'm trying to put my money beside who I know is making things happen, who I, and who I know is in the club, and that's how I view this whole thing. This is the Chamber of Digital Commerce website. Go down, just start going down the list. Executive committee, these are the, this is the membership. The executive committee, which is the big, the most important members, Accenture, Investor in Ripple, Anchorage, who just got a banking license in Wyoming, Binance.us, who has Catherine Cooley as a CEO who, who came from Ripple. A lot of these are partners with Ripple and different things. As you go down the list, Bitrix is, is a partner of Ripple, BNY Mellon, Polysign, DTCC, City, Digital Asset, which was formed by um, what's her face, uh, Blythe Masters, who created the credit default swap, which created the financial crisis, which was, caught, was one of the major causes of the financial crisis. After the financial crisis, she cleaned up, she helped in cleaning up the mess, then left, formed Digital Asset, and I believe she was working on behalf of JP Morgan. Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, Hedera Hashgraph, a IBM, Mastercard, Ripple is is there at the top of the stack. Visa, keep going down. President Circle, who do we have? Gemini, that's the Winklevoss brothers. Aerosex, CME Group, also an investor in Ripple. Stellar, and also where where Miguel Valles came from. Stellar, we know all about Stellar, the brother sister of XRP. Um, Wells Fargo industry members as you go down you'll see more and more I wanted to point out one other one out to you Algorand that I mentioned the other day is in the president's circle too um, and then as you go down you'll see all types of thing, different companies that you might recognize there's R3 they're in the game but anyway my point in, in mentioning all of this is that watch the digital chamber of commerce because what is about to happen to change this world has everything to do with it now it's important I'm a, all you young people out there that were not around when the dot-com boom and bust happened I want you to stop everything you're doing and I want you to listen to what I'm about to to show you okay this is Mark Cuban the billionaire Mark Cuban you've seen him on TV um, he's on the Shark Tank show and I've talked about Mark Cuban before because I believe many of you listening to my voice are going to have a Mark Cuban moment, okay? 
I believe many people that are holding dog coin either have had or will have their, their Mark Cuban moment in this whole run up. There are going to be major winners and there's going to be major losers. I would urge any of you listening to my voice that utility is key. I only invest in, besides my, my holding of Bitcoin, I only invest in digital assets that have utility. But I'm going to make a larger point about, about blockchain here. This video might be a little longer than they've been lately, but that's okay. I said Cuban is activated. I want you to listen to this. Um, I think he's talking about some specific product having to do with DeFi future swap, I, I guess. But listen, to, he, watch how excited he is about what's going on and listen to what he says. 2,500 bucks. It takes me less than 15 seconds. Wow. And I know exactly what my interest rate is. And it's they peer, do something It's peer-to-peer -peer lending, but it actually works. It actually works. And they do something called over collateralization because of the volatility of pricing with the right. different crypto assets. You need to have, you know, if you want to borrow 100, you need to have 150 right. um, in so that they're protected from the volatility. But the point is the amount of friction involved to do it versus dealing with banks. And we're only less, we're six months into this whole thing, I guess, in terms of being consumer friendly. This shit's crazy, Jason. You, I mean, it's, I know, it's I know what I'm doing this weekend. How all businesses work. The shit's crazy. Okay. Now, here's what I want you to understand about Mark Cuban, a couple of things, and the, the, the dot-com boom and bust. What you must understand, and I've talked about it on this channel before, he created a company called Broadcast.com. This is how he became a billionaire. He, he took Broadcast.com public during the dot-com boom, okay? Broadcast.com was a company that, that at the time, remember, we were dealing with dial-up internet connections, you, it, it was literally a technology that was way too ahead of its time. He was trying to broadcast basketball games and sporting events and different kinds of events over the internet. But the problem was it was a dot. It was it was a, a dial up connection. It was the old connection where you would dial in and then you'd hear the and it was like and then you would connect to the internet. And the problem was we would be buying trying to buy things or listening to things like broadcast.com and the internet connection was not powerful enough to sustain it and the connection would keep going down. My point in telling you that, and before I go any further, I want you to watch this. Now, by the way, this is a pro broadcast.com promotional video, okay? And the point that I want you to get, a cr get here is a few things. During the lesson that they learned during during the dot com boom, what 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 happened was, any company that came along with a dot com on the end of their their name, what what Wall Street was doing is they would take the company, and most of these companies were making no money. They were in, highly in debt, just spending money left and and their idea was that this is because it's the internet. This is some new business model, and they would take these companies public. They'd come out at ten dollars and go to freaking two hundred, three hundred dollars in a day, and then later on it all collapsed. And the only ones that survived were the people, the ones that had an actual business model. And what they found out was just because the internet's new does not mean that it changes the fact that you have to be making money as a business. It has to have an actual business model. Now, Mark Cuban, his problem was not that he didn't have a business model. It was that his technology was way ahead of its time. So what he did, he took it public, and the best thing that ever happened to him is Yahoo came along at the time and bought the, bought him out. Um, and I don't remember how the deal went, but it was basically five point something billion dollars. Bought him out and gave him a bunch of Yahoo stock, and he sold out at the freaking, as I recall, got out at, at like the top. Okay, he was one of the few that didn't get burned, but the broadcast.com yahoo literally had it i think it was like three months and never did anything with the company they literally bought this thing for five point something billion dollars and got nothing out of it okay well this is the broadcast.com promo video probably when they were going to ipo and and i and because i want you to understand the dynamic now you got two dynamics going on first of all the way i see it You've got digital assets over here, okay? Now, those are, we have that option. That you didn't have that option back then. 
But now we've got two options from an investing standpoint that, that, that instead of one. Back then, if you weren't someone who had stock options, you weren't working for a company like Broadcast.com, or you weren't one of the venture capital firms that was getting stock in, in, in uh, return for your investment, there was only a handful of people who got in these things, okay? And then when the company went public, they would make the money. Now, you have that, you have the, the stock, op you, there are people that are getting pre-IPO, I'm gonna show you, that's why I talk about link to all the time. There are people that are getting pre-IPO equity in these companies, those are the accredited inv investors, but you also have these digital assets. Now, I think that in digital assets, the same thing is going on, a similar thing is going on to what went on in the dot com. But at this time, I believe that what's going on is, whereas last time they were investing all this money in companies that didn't have a business plan and weren't making money and were in big debt, now you got people that are investing in digital assets that have no utility. And, and there, there's, if there's no utility, it is no investment ultimately in the long run. I believe you're going to see that a similar type shakeout in that in in the dot com with the pre IPO you the ones that that prevailed the ones that came out on the other end were the Amazons the Priceline dot coms the Ebay's um, the Googles and this time it's gonna be I'm telling you write it down it's gonna be the XRPs on the digital assets <laughs> it's gonna be the XRPs the XLMs um, and then you've got that regulatory part too where you don't know who who what the powers that be are gonna allow so you got to be very careful but now i want you to watch this is broadcast.com this is their promo they did on cnn this is the promo i think for the ipo listen to this or it may not be the promo for the ipo but it's just a, a clip that was done on it ipo heard round the world a stock that shot up 249 percent on its first day of trading last week breaking records creating instant fortunes and leaving the rest of us asking why didn't i buy that never before in the history of the world can you come in and listen to almost any team from anywhere in the world okay penn state radio georgia baylor my partner and I went to school, Todd Wagner and I went to school at Indiana University, so we were obviously big um, basketball fans in particular, and some years, hopefully this year, um, big football fans as well. And living in Dallas, unless they were on national television, there was no real way to um, listen or watch the game. And so, you know, Todd and I got that set down together, and my background was in technology, and we're like, with the internet coming on strong, and this was in 1995, there had to be a way for us to be able to, to allow people to listen to games that were out of market. We cure the homesick fan. We take care of that passion. And you know that feeling you get in your stomach when you want to know what to score and you want to hear what's going on? That's not a problem anymore. You know, a little PC and a connection to the net. And you might as well, I might as well be sitting in Bloomington, Indiana. Okay, so I wanted you to see that. Now look at what's going on today. This is from Brad Garlinghouse yesterday. A big step for Coinbase, a giant leap for the industry. Here's the difference, folks. Coinbase has filed for the for their IPO. Okay, they're coming out with with this IPO, but this is not the way dot com was. These are legit companies with business plans who are have been making not just money but bukus of money. Okay, and it's coming. And Coinbase is the first one through the door. You are about to see a freaking frenzy like no other. In the in your it, this frenzy is about to go nuts. So I want you to, this is why I've been talking about link to, and this is also why you keep seeing them offer these, these issues and all of a sudden it's sold out. And so I keep these links to the description of, in, in the description of my videos. And so, and now my eight year old has walked into the room, which he knows not to do by the way. And he's sitting here listening to me do this video. Um, so because he thinks that he has to go to McDonald's right this second. But anyway, this is actually first that he decides he's getting bold now and he decides he can just walk into the room. But I'm going to finish my chain of thought. This, that's why I keep bringing up the link to is because this is what's so great about what's coming is that we get to participate in two sides of all of this this time. And on, on the link to part of things, 
you you can um they, they they just i think it was the sec just passed this thing where you can now there's another way to be accredited besides having a certain amount of wealth or a certain income now you can pass the series 65 and become accredited and that's without having a company sponsor you now my son's right in my face trying to be funny all right i need to finish this final thought without you saying anything by the way um, Ripple tweeted this out yesterday. Digital payments are poised to experience a state of hyper growth in 2021 and beyond. Our latest blog from Ripple's Patrick Thielen delivers the details. Read it here. Um, I just wanted to read this last paragraph here to you. He says, the number of, it says, let's see, right? We know. Okay. What we do know for sure is that cryptocurrency is no longer a dirty word. It's becoming a mainstay for financial institutions, small businesses, and everyday consumers and will fuel dramatic growth in the payment space. Small businesses and consumers will demand services requiring instantaneous payments. Um, and then this last line, what the internet did for communications, blockchain will do for trusted transactions. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that my eight-year-old did something he's never done today and decided to be bold. Thank you. For